Welcome to Technology Trends, a television program about ancient history and future possibilities. I'm your host, Brian Hall. The title of our show today is Toxic Religion, the Cause of the New York Tragedy, a very topical subject. And with us is a very special guest who is featured very prominently here in Northern California at two conferences, ConspiracyCon and the Bay Area UFO Expo. Uh, it's my pleasure to bring with us Mr. Jordan Maxwell. Jordan is preeminent in his research in secret societies, occult religion, philosophy, government, conspiracies, you name it. And uh, Jordan, welcome to the show. Thank you very much, Brian. Toxic religion, that is the title of our program. Yeah. It's the title of many of your lectures, mm -hmm. many of uh, uh, the uh, television programs in other parts of the country you've talked about this. Mm -hmm. Um, as an introduction to the show, what is toxic religion? <coughs> well, toxic means deadly. And religion has played a major part in uh, all wars for as far back as one can go in history. Um, there's never been a religious movement in the world that wasn't a little political. Never been a political movement in the world that wasn't a little religious. Mm -hmm. Religion and politics have always understood uh, in the ancient world that the king represented not only the the governmental arrangement and system under which the people lived, but he also represented God, the pharaohs, the kings of Babylon, Sumeria. Uh, so the kings always had a dual position. They were they worshipped, they were the representatives of God and they ran the government. And uh, so the, we've always had in almost every government that's ever existed uh, a connection between church and state, so mm -hmm. to speak. It was only to the coming of America where uh, there was a religious overtone with the founding of America, but uh, it was established that each man had his, uh, uh, you know, the right to believe whatever he wished, and that government and religion should not be mixed, because we're going to have such an influx of people coming from all over the world. There should not be one state religion. We should allow all people to have their belief systems in this country called America. But unfortunately, um, what we're seeing happening, unfortunately, in New York has religious overtones. Yes, they have political and monetary overtones, uh, but um, the whole Islamic world is a religious establishment. Adolf Hitler's Nazi Germany was a religious uh, movement on the world scene. Most people do not realize that Adolf Hitler and the Communist Party even though they vowed that they had nothing to do with God, the Communist Party and communism as we know it uh, had tremendous religious impl implications. Uh, there are words and terms that were used by the communists <coughs> and the Nazis can be traced back to religious philosophies coming out of Sumeria, mm -hmm. uh, Babylonia, Egypt, uh, out of ancient Rome. Uh, where even corporate fascism mm -hmm. is based on ancient Roman philosophies of, uh, of who is going to govern the world, who will have the, the power to govern the earth. So uh, these things that we are experiencing in this country, uh, while they are obviously a tragedy, and no one's belittling that, uh, there is much more to be known mm -hmm. uh, as to why these kind of things happen. And I am saying that religion, unfortunately, is playing a very big part and that tragedy that happened, and I can show you how. Mm -hmm. And yes, there is a banking, there are, there's money, there's high politics, but the highest political movement in the world, as far as I'm concerned, is the Vatican. The Vatican is a very powerful political entity uh, on the world stage. <coughs> you mentioned God a minute ago. Um, from what I understand, in, in our history, more blood has been shed in the name of religion. Nothing's changed, I take it. Nothing. Nothing has changed uh, because there's a world of difference between religion and spirituality. Uh, one can be very religious and totally, totally miss the point on being spiritual. Mm -hmm. Spiritual is something on the inside that, that goes inside of you and, and, and it connects you to your divine uh, pr uh, connection in the universe. And that's a very personal thing. Uh, religion is a corporate entity, quite literally a corporate entity. 
Uh, also, you might want to know this, too, that banking, uh, since the World Trade Towers represented banks and money, international money, it wasn't American trade trade center. Mm -hmm. It wasn't the United States trade. It was the World Trade Center. That's a key point I think people <coughs> need to understand. Yeah, it wasn't. I, this, I do not believe that this was an attack on the American people at all. But this, but when the national leaders say that this was an attack on America, it's the same and tantamount to saying when someone, uh, when, the, when the cops put the squeeze on a mafia guy, on some mafiosi, uh, who is legitimately needs to put the, the you know put in jail? They will turn around and say, "Look, all you're doing is just you you are persecuting the Italian people. Mm -hmm. You know you're picking the Italian people, and, and consequently they're shifting the blame away from their own underworld activity mm -hmm. and saying you are persecuting me because I'm of the Italian race or the Italian family." Mm -hmm. Well, that's the same thing I think is happening here. When we hear the government saying that this is an attack on America, I don't believe it was an attack on America at all. I don't think people around the world, I've traveled around the world, I, I don't think people are, hate America. I think that they are, are very unhappy and hate things that the American, so-called American leaders are doing around the mm -hmm. world in our name. Well, I would agree with you on that. So I don't sanction the decisions made by most of my leaders. No. Um, no because they aren't doing a very good job of leading. And from what you're saying, it sounds like that's not by accident, no. but by design. Absolutely. Like what happened to the Trade Center is just a matter of business. That's all it was. As far as I'm concerned, uh, this, this bin Laden uh, uh, Arabic guy... Uh, as far as I know, from what I can tell, he was a business partner in American oil companies. Now, there's a lot of stuff going on mm -hmm. uh, behind the scenes, as it always has been. Mm -hmm. My mother had an uncle who worked in the Vatican Secretary of State's office when I was a child. I had two uh, federal judges. My mother had two federal judges as uncles that I grew up with in my hometown. My great-grandfather was a senator from the state of Florida. I have that kind of stuff in my blood. I've always realized that there's a whole system going on mm -hmm. here. And when, they, when, when you see things happening on the world stage, don't be too quick to make a judgment. Maybe there's a lot more you don't know. You used that word system before. You've also used another word about our system that we see a lot nowadays called the matrix. Yes, yeah, as a matter of fact, yeah. well, two things. Uh, first of all, the word system, you know, like our educational system and governmental banking system, the word system is a Latin word, in point of fact, that, that the Romans used for the sewer. It was referred to as the sewer system, <laughs> really, and so that's where the word system comes from. And consequently, it is true that we, that's what we have for an educational and judicial system. It is tru truly in the sewer. We're not being told anything. We're being lied to and deceived. Uh, we don't have leaders, we have misleaders. We have people who are manipulating, exploiting the poor around the world. Uh, this is not Americans, uh, Americans doing this. Uh, there's a world of difference between, and wait a minute, I should go back and, and add this point too about the matrix that you mentioned, because mm -hmm. I have used that term. Back in 1989, I, I made a, a television um, video documentary and I called it the matrix of uh, the matrix of power and I just think it's interesting that now we're having uh, movies coming out called yes. the matrix mm -hmm. uh, I was the one that come up with that name a long time ago <clears throat> but there is a world system operating and I believe America one of our founding fathers said that we as Americans should not get involved in the foreign affairs of the world. We should stay right here at home, take care of our own people, and bring people from all over the world and make them a free people so that we can be free here to show the world as an example of what could be and what we could possibly do on the earth. With all of us coming together from all nations and peoples, e pluribus unum was the, uh, was the motto. E pluribus unum, meaning one out of many. The idea was to bring all the peoples of the world that wanted freedom to come to America and we would live together and honor each other's differences. Uh, and this is what made America great and what makes America great today. 
but there are people in this country who uh, do not want to see America uh, because it's a very powerful country, do not want to see America uh, because we are a free people, and that's a threat to totalitarianism all over the world. <clears throat> but the problem is, is that <clears throat> the uh, people who are running this country are not, in my opinion, not Americans. Mm -hmm. They are internationalists. They are people who have an international uh, agenda. And it has nothing to do with, with who we are as a great people in America. We're talking money now. We're mm -hmm. just talking high politics. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> and when you talk about international money, and everyone realizes how, how sinister and insidious money, big money, can be. I mean, power corrupts, and absolute power corrupts absolutely. Big money, international banking, is based on a, an occult system called the Uniform Commercial Code, mm -hmm. UCC. Uniform Commercial Code is the code of international banking. All banks operate the same around the world, no matter what culture, no matter what country. You've talked about this code many times, and it's the umbrella code over all other codes that That's we right. see everywhere. Exactly. The penal code, a traffic code, <coughs> education code. You mentioned what a code is, something that's encrypted, a secret. Yeah, well, I mean, kept like... from all of us. For instance, the, the Statue of Liberty <coughs> could not be put on land according to maritime law. According to international law, the Statue of Liberty could not be put on American land. It had to be put in water. So they built the, the thing out in that harbor of New York and put the Statue of Liberty out there because the law said that they could not put it on land. Why? It's because it's, the statue is called <clears throat> the Statue of Liberty, not the Statue of Freedom. Mm -hmm. We're not free. Mm -hmm. Liberty is what a sailor gets when you pull in the port. Mm -hmm. You ask the captain if you can have a little free time. And if he allows you to, most likely he's not, but if he allows you to have some time, then you pull liberty. You get liberty. Mm -hmm. You don't have freedom. Mm -hmm. So there's a world of difference between being a free American and being uh, and having liberty. So that's why you couldn't put the Statue of Liberty on, on our land. That's a very good <coughs> point you make, that the use of the language, the very subtle use that we don't even realize, it's not the Statue Absolutely. of Freedom. It's a Statue of Liberty, which is only something that's given to you, even permitted permitted when they feel like it. Exactly. And any government that can give you something can take it away the mm -hmm. same way. That's mm -hmm. why civil rights, there is no such a thing as a civil right. Mm -hmm. That's why you have the American Civil Liberties Union, not a civil right. You have mm -hmm. civil liberties, meaning civil comes from government, civili of the government. Mm -hmm. Well, any time the government gives you something, the next one, next administration coming in can cancel it. Mm -hmm. So you don't have any rights. You have a liberty, hopefully. A lot of this stuff, the business, the religion, the politics, um, whether it's overt or part of the underworld, it all has origins back to the ancient world. And I understand you've got some slides, some pictures that you want to demonstrate to people where all of this symbolism comes from and the <coughs> emblems. Do you Absolutely. I would well, love to show that when you uh, Okay, when you're ready. well, we'll do that in just a moment. Uh, what I was saying to you is that uh, the governments of the world and the religions of the world work hand in hand behind the scenes. Uh, and they create all kinds of violence and revolutions and all sorts of trouble because of religious beliefs. Uh, James Billington, the, uh, the chief librarian for the Library of Congress, has said in the opening of his book, Fire in the Minds of Men, that revolutions and violence throughout the world has been the work of religious thinking, concepts and ideas of theology and religion is the basis for r violence and revolutions throughout the world. I would also like to point out that your listeners should and the audience should, if they're really interested to understand the kind of chaos that went on in New York, just remember what I'm saying here. Do some homework on this subject called the planet Saturn. Saturn was a very important symbol to the Nazis to the communist, to the uh, to the, uh, the Christian church, especially in Judaism and in Islam. In Islam, the planet Saturn is very important. He is the god of the black robe. This is why we have judges who wear black robes and priests who wear black robes and, and young people when they graduate wear black robes. The black robe was the symbol for the god Saturn. 
uh, Mardi Gras, a Christian celebration. Mardi Gras is a celebration of the destruction of an old order of the world, destroying, partying, raping, plundering, and the destruction of an old world order in preparation for a coming new world order. And if you go to, uh, to the uh, Rio and places like that where this uh, Mardi Gras is held, carnival, mm -hmm. coming from carnivorous, the eating of flesh, mm. carni carnival, um, you will find that carnival are the, uh, the king of carnival is called King Saturn. King Saturn is the god of all chaos and destruction. And you have that. That's Nazism. Mm -hmm. That's exactly what the Nazis believed, is that you do something to cause great, terrible chaos and, and destruction, and it will frighten the people mm -hmm. into giving the king more power to, to create a new world order. This is what the Nazis did. The Nazis burned down the Reichstadt building in Berlin to frighten all Germans and all of Europe. They blew up and burned down the government building. I believe that this is the kind of thing we're seeing today, religious and political conspiracies to cause this kind of tragedy for the American people. So not much has changed, especially if George Bush Sr. just 10 years ago mentioned a new world order, sure the did. same as the Nazis did back in That's World exactly War II. Right. Using the George Bush, uh, the father of the president, was famous for, uh, for newly bringing into our language in our psyche in this country a, an idea called the New World Order. All one has to do is go back and read Nazi philosophy, Nazi symbols, and that's what Adolf Hitler was trying to do, is bring in a New World Order. So I'm saying that Americans need to wake up and find out where did these religious and political ideas come from. Um, a lot of people don't realize that in Mecca, in Saudi Arabia, a Mecca is a square, it's a black square. That's a symbol for the planet Saturn. Mm. Many people do not know what we call today the Star of David. The two, hex the two triangles mm -hmm. interlaced becomes a hexagram. Mm -hmm. the, the ancient people said they were putting the hex on you. And so they put the hex on you and you wear the hexagram. Mm. And that was that star, six pointed, what we call the Star of David. In history books, you can go and read it in the library. It's called the Star of Saturn. Mm -hmm. This is why Jews still today go to a temple on Saturn's day. And it's a fascinating story about how Saturn uh, was referred to as El. And, in the, and today we even have uh, people who are worshiping the planet Saturn in religion and don't even realize it. We are called elders. Mm -hmm. You're one of the elites. Well, how did you get to be an elite or an elder? Well, you got elected. How did you get elected? Well, it, all of these words and terms mean something, and they have a definite occult or hidden religious significance to words. Are we going to see a lot of these symbols and timing and emblems, as you've talked about, in recent events? Uh, Oklahoma City was compared to Reichstag. This World Trade incident uh, clearly sounds like it's related to Reichstag, and it's rampant with symbolism and numbers and timing. Absolutely. Very significant, but people, I don't think, no, most people don't know this. It's, most it's in our faces, but we d have no idea. That's exactly right. Most people are too busy trying to earn a dollar to really sit down and look at the back of a dollar bill. You know, the back of the dollar bill is filled with occult emblems and implications that would stagger your mind. If you look at the, the, the uh, pyramid on the back of the dollar bill, look at the presidential mm -hmm. seal, mm -hmm. you will see the Star of David above the eagle's head. Go look at the back of the dollar bill. The 13 stars, why do you have 13 stars? Why did you have 13 colonies? Um, the 13 stars on the back of the dollar bill make up the symbol of the hexagram. There are, there are nine feathers in the, in the tail. Uh, for the Council of Nine and the secret societies. Mm -hmm. All of these symbols and emblems and things that we take for granted every day, national coats of arms, halotry, symbols, emblems, uh, are trying to tell you something. Most people, you, most people won't still understand the symbols without having done a little bit of homework. That's right. I think what our audience would like to know is what implications will this uh, trade building disaster have on our system, our matrix, our society, our government, and this infamous New World Order agenda? I, I am afraid that what's going to happen, and it's going to happen very quickly, 
we are going to be talked into because we're an ignorant and ill-informed people in America. We're a trusting people, we're generous, and we, we don't do a whole lot of homework, and we trust our misleaders, mm -hmm. uh, and they're lying to us, and I think we're going to be talked into something called a new world order, a world government, because the only, in, in order to protect us all, we've got to have a new fascist international Nazi world order, in which Herr Führer will now save the, 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 the great nation. One gets the impression the empire never fell. Yeah. I don't think the Nazis lost anything. Mm -hmm. I think they just lost a battle. They didn't lose the. Uh, they lost the. They didn't lose the war. They lost a battle. Mm -hmm. Nazism is still very much alive under Operation Paperclip. The Vatican uh, supplied all the top Nazis with identification, with uh, passports, with money. The Vatican supplied all the top Nazis to get out of Germany when in 1944-45 they began to see that the war was going bad for Germany. The no top Nazis were, were quickly and quietly slipped out of Germany because the war was going, uh, going bad. The Vatican was the, uh, formed something called, and go, go do your homework, the word is a rat line, R-A-T-L-I-N-E, rat line. The Vatican had something called a rat line in which they were getting top Nazis out of Germany, sending them to the Uruguay, Paraguay, uh, Brazil, and the top of the line Nazis were being brought into America to operate in the Pentagon and into uh, our government here. So that our government today is just filled with Nazis from the old regime. But mm -hmm. Americans don't know that. They have no idea about Operation Paperclip. There are a lot of funny yeah. things going on with our space program, and a lot of that is run by Nazi scientists oh, brought over. I mean, to we went to the, uh, we're told that we went to the moon, and we're doing all this great stuff in space with good old American ingenuity, like mm. Dr. Werner von Braun mm -hmm. and all of the German Nazis. NASA itself, that whole National Space Administration thing, is a Nazi outfit, period. It's, it's run by Nazis, it's financed by Nazis, it is a total Nazi outfit. And this is what blows my mind when I mm -hmm. see Americans seeing the space shuttle going off mm -hmm. and everyone's applauding. And I'm thinking, what are you applauding for? You're not going anywhere. I mean, you're going to pay for it, but you're not going anywhere. How many people know how much pollution is blown out of the back of that yeah. rocket into our, and who these people are who are running NASA? Look at symbols are very important. Words and terms and symbols are very important. So I'll give you an example. Let me give you an example by showing you a few okay, slides. Okay, let's do that. And what we're gonna what we're gonna see is just something that you see all the time. Pictures that you see all the time, but you just didn't know what you were looking at. Okay. Very clever. Very this very clever. This should uh, be very the first fascinating. Time, uh, for instance, the papal headdress. Um, people have seen the papal headdress. The Pope wears. That headdress is referred to, that papal headdress is referred to as the Pope's mitre, uh, the papal mitre. And many people have seen that headdress and never realized where it came from. As a matter of fact, let me give you a different, a better picture. Now with this particular picture is uh, a, a wood carving from the Middle Ages of Jesus going before the high priest Caiaphas, uh, the Jewish high priest. And the Jewish high priest is wearing, uh, this is a Jewish high priest, wearing the papal mitre. And this is exactly why the Pope today wears the Jewish yarmulke. He wears the Jewish uh, cap, skull cap. Because there's a very definite connection between the Vatican and the old ancient uh, our Semitic, uh, Semitic uh, what do we call it, um, Sumerian, Babylonian, Akkadian system. And the symbols are very interesting. Now, getting back to this uh, papal headdress of the Pope's mitre. Uh, the reason why we have the papal mitre is because many of the ancient gods in the Phoenician, Canaanite, Babylonian system were said to be fish gods, gods of the sea, the fish gods. And consequently, we have in reference books, you will see some of these ancient priests uh, representing themselves in clothing of a fish. Would this have anything to do with the uh, age of Pisces? Yeah, absolutely. 
absolutely. And consequently, here is something called Ani's The Fishman. Um, and here is another one. Uh, I don't know if the, that's a little better. Yeah. Now, we might want to back off because I think we're going to have some bigger pictures of this. This is an Assyrian, uh, an Assyrian worshiping the god Dagon, Dagon the fish god. Now, I don't know if we can see uh, that headdress or not, but here's another one. Here's another one. Dagon sounds much like the Dogon tribe That's that encountered it. the fish people from the stars. That's exactly right. Now, now you're connect, making the right connections. Mm -hmm. Dagon... Uh, the fish god, and so you'll see here is an Assyrian wearing the fish garb. He's wearing a fish head, and here is a, a famous painting from the Middle Ages of the priest of Dagon officiating in a hospital, and here are the priests wearing the fish uh, headdress. Dagon, the fish god. Now this is why the Pope's mitre uh, is important, because what the Pope's mitre actually is is the symbol for Dagon, the fish god. Here we have... Oh, you can see that. Yes. However, when you do it this way, yeah, you will see it this way Look as the fish. And when you go back, you will see the, the fish head. The fish is Dagon, the old Babylonian, Sumerian, Phoenician, Canaanite, Dagon, the fish god. And here is the papal mitre. So you can clearly see that. Yep. And here's another picture from uh, of the Pope, and you will see that the headdress. There it is again. There it is again. The fish god. So consequently, this whole idea of the papal mitre, symbols in the Catholic Church, symbols in religion, uh, go back to um, uh, go back to a whole. Uh, world of occult symbols and emblems. Now, uh, we'll, we'll put another particular slide on a particular set of slides. Let's, let's leave this one and go to another one. Well, I see even the graduation there where they're wearing the black square. That's on their right. Heads. The you black square that. is, uh, let's see, the black square, mm -hmm. the square mortar board. That is connected directly to Mecca in the Islamic world, Mecca. Uh, Mecca is the black square. It's called the Kaaba stone. So let's go to the other set of uh, slides, and we'll we'll talk about the uh, the next subject. So we're gonna let's go to the next set of slides. So we'll shut that one off and do something else now. Now the point I was making before mm -hmm. is that uh, something as simple as the papal mitre becomes actually from a fish head, and therefore Christians are driving around with a fish on the back of their car not realizing that it, it represents Dagon, the fish god. Um, and in Islam, in Islam, which is, of course, what we're talking about going to war with, that's a lot of people in the Islamic world. And uh, they have a very, you know, a very important religious belief system that says we are their enemies. But um, the very idea of Islam is worshiping the god Allah. All one has to do is go to an, uh, an, a dictionary and look up Allah, and it will tell you that Allah is the same as the Jewish God in the Old Testament, Yahweh. Yahweh is the Hebrew God of the Old Testament, and Allah is the Islamic God. Uh, it's the same thing. Allah and Yahweh, uh, uh, Yahweh and Allah is the same God. It's just one language is Hebrew, and one is Arabic. One it's get, the same God. One would get the impression somebody's playing a big joke on the planet. Without a doubt. The, 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 the people of this planet, the Islamic world, the Muslims do not realize that Allah is connected to the planet Saturn. This is why Mecca has a black square. Mecca is called the Kaaba or the Kaaba. And, and this is why today we have streets in England called Kaaba Stone Streets, mm. little black squares, the Kaaba. Or you graduate from university with the black square, the Kaaba. So if the source of all these religions is the same, why are we fighting each other? Because we're ignorant. We're not Ill, uh, very well informed. And consequently, people who are far more clever and far more well-read 
and highly paid and have no morals or scruples at all know how to uh, manipulate and exploit us so we fight ourselves. It would make sense that if you're in a prison with, uh, say, an all-black prison in, say, Africa, and you're thrown in the prison, and you're a white man in an all-black prison, for instance, as an example, it would make sense that you would cause problems among the black population. You know, make sure that they stay at each other's throat. Mm -hmm. Spread lies back and forth mm -hmm. to keep them angry at each other. Well, if people are ignorant, that's pretty easy it's to do. It's pretty easy to do. And the idea is keep everybody busy, mad at each other, and now they won't look at you, what you're doing. Well, that sounds awfully familiar. Oh, yeah. I think this is exactly what the Queen of England and the British royalty and the Vatican, a lot of people do not know the Vatican made a contract, an actual contract was signed with the King of England back in the Middle Ages, where the Pope said that he declared himself the Vicar of Christ. The word vicar in Latin sim simply means someone who stands in for someone else. So the idea of today, we know the Pope is the vicar of Christ. What does that mean? Mm -hmm. It means that according to the Vatican concept that God created the whole heavens and he created the earth, he gave the earth to Jesus, his son, and so consequently Jesus owns the earth and everything on it. But since Jesus is not here right now, somebody has to run the earth. <laughs> so consequently, the Pope is going to stand in for him till he gets here, <laughs> right? So he's the vicar of Christ. However, the Pope is very busy, and he doesn't have time to run the whole earth. He's got important things to do. So he made a contract, an actual legal um, uh, contract was drawn up between the King of England and the papacy in, in which the Pope gave uh, in a trust document and a trust set up the whole world in a trust and gave it to the king of england to run a lot of people are totally unaware of this of this contract between rome and the king of england to rule the world and at that time the people who were called english became known as british british comes from a hebrew word berith in hebrew the word berith is a contract or a covenant and ish in Hebrew means man or men, can be singular or plural. Therefore, berith ish, contract man, or man of the contract, or British, the man of the contract. This is why in the Western world, anything you're going to do in business requires a contract. That's the way the Vatican set it up. Sounds like the way the mafia works, That's too. exactly right, to put a contract on you. This is, you're going to buy a car, you sign a contract. All international banking is based on contract. Consequently, all international banking law is based on Vatican canon law. Vatican canon law is the basis for international banking law all over the earth. Now, how many people know that? And once you understand how the uniform commercial code that runs the banks, also they bought you. And that's a whole story, how you were born, how you were bought by the banks when you were born. Mm -hmm. That's an extraordinary story. That is a long story. Do Let's you get back to a particular, uh, another symbol that a lot of people have heard about. Very Remember good. the movie Indiana Jones and the Raiders of the Lost Ark? Yes. Okay. Indiana Jones is commissioned by this government. For some reason, this government decided they wanted to find the Lost Ark of the Covenant, which is a Jewish symbol in the Old Testament. First of all, where did Indiana Jones go to look for the lost Ark of the Covenant? The first place he goes to is Tibet. Why would he go to Tibet? Well, first thing he finds in Tibet was another Nazi, a Nazi looking for the lost Ark. Nazis played prominently in that film. Absolutely. Now, why, were the, uh, uh, why was Indiana Jones and the Nazis meeting up in Tibet? Now, after that, they go to, to now they know where the, uh, the, the, um, the lost Ark is. Where do they go? Do they go to the Holy Land? Do they go to Jerusalem to find the Jewish uh, lost uh, Ark of the Covenant? No. They go to Egypt. Why? And they find it in Egypt. Why? And the Nazis are there in Egypt. And incidentally, go back and watch the movie, and you'll find that the Nazis were being led by a Frenchman. A French archaeologist is leading the Nazis. What is going on here? Why are Frenchmen leading the Nazis? It has to do with a secret society that is highly connected to the Nazi world movement in France called the Priori de Sion, the Holy House of Sion. The Priori de Sion is a well-known, established 
uh, fact of life now that we know that there's been for many hundreds of years a secret society operating in Europe called the Priori de Sion, or the Holy House of Sion. And they are heavily connected with the world Nazi movement, international fascism. This is what Steven Spielberg, I believe, is trying to tell you, that you better go back and look at this whole idea of the lost ark. It's not in Jerusalem. It's in, it's in Egypt. The Nazis are looking for it. The Americans are looking for it. Why? Because there's something going on here they haven't told you. You need to do your homework. Now, let me show you. Here, we will see here <coughs> the Ark of the Covenant. Now, here is the Ark of the Covenant in the middle. Uh, that is on the New York State, New York State uh, seal for the state of New York. You will see the two angels, and then and between their wings is the Ark of the Covenant. Here is a, a, a classic picture of the Ark of the Covenant of Israel. Now, why is Indiana Jones looking for the lost Ark? First of all, it's called the Ark of the Covenant. And as I said, the Ark of the Covenant, a covenant is a contract. And it's important to remember that a covenant is a contract. There is the lost Ark again in a typical painting from a Christian book. Now. Again, you'll see the angels on top. If you'll remember in the movie, those and they're beautifully done, those angels that were on top of the uh, Ark of the Covenant. And mm -hmm. here it is again, mm -hmm. the high priest of Israel with the, with the Ark of the Covenant. Now, what, I'll, what you need to understand now about this symbol is that the Ark of the Covenant in the Old Testament, in the Bible, is a story. And it's based on an original story that we have never been told. The original story was not a Jewish Ark of the Covenant because there was no Jewish Ark of the Covenant. What in point of fact there was in, in actual history, here's another picture of the uh, Ark of the Covenant being carried, but in point of fact the, here's another picture, I've got quite a few pictures of the Ark being carried into Jerusalem and we're told that the Hebrew people, you know, they carried the Ark of the covenant. There's another classic picture. Now what I'm saying is that when you do your homework and go to the uh, Jewish reference works, you will find that the Ark of the Covenant was actually an Egyptian symbol and it was referred to a thousand years before there was ever such a thing as an Ark of the Covenant. In Egypt there was something called the Ark of the Contract. The Ark of the Contract was an Egyptian Ark, not Hebrew. And even in Smith's Bible Dictionary, get the Bible Dictionary, Smith's Bible Dictionary. And in it you will see, and if you can zoom in on that, uh, uh, on that line underneath of the picture, if you can a little bit, you will see that it says there that the word ark um, was adopted from the Egyptian. There is an Egyptian ark. That's from Smith's Bible Dictionary. Now here's another one from uh, another Bible Dictionary. And just stay there because we're going to have another picture. Now focus in on that picture in the middle. Put it into the middle and you will see there it is again. The Egyptian Ark or Sacred Chest. So consequently the, the whole idea of the Ark of the Covenant was actually called the Ark of the Contract. This is a drawing of the actual ark that was taken out of King Tutankhamun's tomb, King Tut's tomb. Hmm. There is an actual picture of King Tutankhamun's ark of the contract. Uh, this ark of the contract, incidentally, was supposedly a contract between the gods of Egypt and the pharaohs to rule the world. So it, it was like referred to as the ark of the contract. It sounds like those who put together the movie Raiders of the Lost Ark and perhaps other movies out of Hollywood have done their homework. Oh, abs absolutely. No doubts in my mind about it. Maybe you could zoom in on that picture where the uh, red arrow is. If you'll zoom in on it a little bit, you can see that uh, there are here Egyptians carrying the Ark. The Ark of the Chest of the Contract. Now, next we'll have up on the Here's another picture from an Egyptian reference book. Let me show you here. Okay, now there is another picture in Egypt of carrying the Ark of the Contract.
But remember, we're talking about at least a five to seven hundred years before there would have been an Ark of the Covenant. In Egypt, there was an Ark of the Contract. Uh, go down on the bottom, and you can maybe zoom in on that one, and you'll see uh, there again is a again. picture of the ancient Egyptians. This is from an Egyptian book I got while I was in Egypt from the uh, Cairo Museum. And they have pictures in there of the old Ark of the Contract from Egypt. So this is 700 years before the time of the Ark of the Covenant. Absolutely. Well, if somebody were to look at this book, it might challenge their entire belief system. Absolutely, and that's exactly what I'm saying. Now, let's get back to, that's, that's it for the slides for the moment. So the point I'm making here is that we need to understand that there's a, there's a world system at work which is based on deception, misinformation, misleaders, and the people who are behind, uh, for instance, let me give you an example. Mm -hmm. uh, in the old Celtic Druidic system in Northern Europe, uh, the, what we would call the white man's established system in Northern Europe, there was a very powerful priesthood called the Celtic Druids. And in the Druidic Celtic system, one of the most important symbols in that system, uh, that ancient system, and we're talking about even a, a 500 to 1,000 years before the Roman Empire, the Celtic Druidic system was in operation in, in Northern Europe. One of their most important symbols has come down to us today, and that is the magic wand, like uh, Merlin the magician with his magic mm -hmm. wand, you know, Mickey Mouse with his, you know, and the conductor of an orchestra with his uh, From Fantasia. magic wand. Fan Fantasia. Mm -hmm. The magic wands were always made out of the wood of a holly tree. It was always made out of hollywood. Consequently, they're still working their magic in Hollywood because the holly tree, uh, that was very sacred to the ancient magicians, the ancient uh, Celtic uh, Druid magicians. All of our governmental superstructure in America, and listen closely to this, all of our governmental arrangements in America, all of our religious institutions in the Western world, all of our governmental laws, jurisdictional laws, regulations, codes, all of these things which govern the Western civilization are Druidic. They are absolutely Celtic Druidic system. And unless you understand the Celtic Druidic system and the old ancient Egyptian, Sumerian, Babylonian, Phoenician, Canaanite system, Un understand there's been a huge, enormous amount of material that has been covered up so that people just go all about their daily business uh, to their synagogues and to churches and never ever question where any of these things are coming from. And Martin Luther King said it best that there will be no peace where there is no justice. Everyone realizes the implications of that. If there is no justice, there's not going to be any peace. So I am saying that what we need to do is take, take a whole new look at who we are in this country and what it is we believe about ourselves and believe about God and, uh, the, and start showing respect for other people because this attack in New York was, again, in my opinion, not an attack on the American people. It was on an attack on certain people within our country who are misusing, abusing, and exploiting people around the world for their own agenda. Mm -hmm. And I think Americans, I, I love the idea of seeing Americans coming together and flying the flag and, and, and all of that and become patriotic, because I'm patriotic. I love my country. But a lot of people don't know when you see the American flag, mm -hmm. that flag that is called the American flag is not the original American flag. They've slipped this one in on us. That American flag you see flying everywhere is a wartime martial law flag. It is not a, pa a flag of peace for America. It is a wartime flag. Go do your homework. Mm -hmm. Go in the library and get a book on flags, and you will see that the original flag for America, the, the flag that represented America, mm -hmm. had stripes up and down, mm -hmm. not, cri not across, up and down. Well, I think the sentiments are in the right direction for the American people, oh, even though they don't know about the symbolism. You mentioned 
the ancient druidic philosophies and religions yeah and the topic of this show is about the twin towers can you elaborate more on the symbolism oh of the yes. attack on the twin towers the twin towers goes back into the most ancient world all the ancient uh, uh, temples in egypt sumeria babylon phoenicia cana greece rome all of the ancient temples all of the ancient uh, holy places on the earth always had double dual uh, symbols in the towers uh, even in the bible uh, the the uh, the uh, temple of solomon had two towers sitting in front they were they were called pillars and one was called jackin and boaz they were two twin towers twin towers have been used for thousands of years representing a connection between the powers of this world and the powers of money and religion the twin towers mm -hmm. and so that's why I believe that we need to start looking at the symbols and I I would love to do a, a whole series of programs mm -hmm. just on twin towers twin towers banking I mean, and a, religion absolutely it's a, it's a well known that Jacob and Boaz in the Old Testament what it symbolized mm -hmm. and there's sexual symbolism in all of this too I mean mm -hmm. classic example of sexual symbolism right here in your face is in Washington DC with the um, Washington Monument mm -hmm. the Washington Monument is an obelisk the Washington Monument is an Egyptian obelisk an Egyptian obelisk is a male erection mm -hmm. it connects to the Oval Office okay <laughs> I'm serious this is what the symbols mean mm -hmm. this is why there's a water down the waterway down between the male erection and the Oval Office mm -hmm. it's the waters of life you came out of your mother's water where you were birthed uh, when absolutely mm -hmm very profound it's an extraordinary story of betrayal lies deception and I'm saying that what happened in New York we need as Americans to start doing our homework and finding out who runs these banks who was it that sets these uh, religious institutions up where do these terms come from because the rest of the people out there in the world uh, are looking at us and thinking how foolish and ignorant can you be Mm -hmm. I mean, you're talking about how terrible New York was, but what about Vietnam? Mm -hmm. What about Cambodia? What about the... Uh, what about Afghanistan? What about Afghanistan? Is anybody looking at what's going on over there? How about the, uh, how about the Armenian massacre? A million and a half Armenians murdered by Turks. Nobody seemed to have been too much uh, upset about that. Mm -hmm. My God, when you see the films, which I, I watched, documentary films, on what the Armenians, uh, seeing little children women and children coming in with their whole sides blown off uh, arms being cut off uh, bodies being brought in of little children with no heads and I'm thinking my god you talk about a holocaust what about the Armenian holocaust what about the American Indians what about the Chinese in Tiananmen Square mm -hmm. this is all based on rivalry between international banking families religion and I'm saying in the bottom line is that we as Americans have the f the finest country the world has ever known because we don't make distinctions among people's religions we should come together as Americans mm -hmm. and I would I would also throw this in and and I'm not expecting you to understand it right now but you go to my website and do some reading on it that there is a world of difference there is a very big difference between being a United States citizen and an American citizen. Mm -hmm. It doesn't mean the same thing at all. There's a world of difference between the word uh, state of California and California state. Doesn't mean the same thing at all. California state is one thing. State of California means something totally different. Hmm. And if you don't know the difference, you're never going to see it coming. You're never going to figure out there's a world of difference between being a lawyer and an attorney. Doesn't mean the same thing. When I you, didn't know that. Absolutely. When you walk into a courtroom, why do you go to court? You play basketball and tennis on a court. Why? Because the whole thing in a court is to put the ball back in the other guy's court. And the judge is the referee. Mm -hmm. And the judge is wearing a black robe because he represents the planet Saturn. Mm -hmm. Saturn is called L. Now he's one of the L elect. He got L elected. Mm -hmm. So he's one of the L elites. 
Well, it's, and oh, go it's ahead. just a it's just a phenomenal story about mm -hmm. you know we say that the judge sits on, on uh, rules from the bench. The word bench in Latin means a bank. Mm -hmm. Where do you find a bank? On both sides of the river, river banks. What does it do? It directs the flow of the current. See, money. Currency. We need to understand we've been lied to, deceived, and this kind of information is now more so than ever needed. Well, I would agree with you about that. I think a contemporary audience would as well. I think they would want to look at your website and learn more about this, um, about what the uniform commercial code means to them, what banking, what religion, what the new world order means, what the, the attack on these twin towers means, okay. um, also an attack on our military uh, through the Pentagon, what right. that really means, what profound effect this is going to have on our lives if we don't understand what's going on and do our homework. That's it. And uh, I would certainly hope that we as Americans will not agree with uh, being used as pawns in this big global game that's been going on. Right. Uh, this was a big step towards a new world order. I agree bet with you. It. You can bet on it. Um, I would definitely encourage people to find out more about this information. I think anybody watching this show uh, will feel motivated to, to learn more and activate him or herself, uh, him or herself, empower him or herself. Uh, this is, I think, some of the most important information we can get, at least in these times right now. Oh, you can bet on We're that. We're coming to a head with something. Mm -hmm. And, and I think most hidden. Americans can feel it. Mm -hmm. And it's been hidden for far too long, really hidden in such a way that people will never even suspect. That's why I'm, I'm doing what I'm doing. I'm trying to awaken America to look at the symbols, check mm -hmm. the words, see how we're being manipulated mm -hmm. and exploited for our ignorance. There's a world of stuff that we just have not been told. That's why I would suggest if you go on my website, uh, read all about it. It's um, www.jordanmaxwell.com. Uh, all one word. All one word. Mm -hmm. All lowercase. Right. www.jordanmaxwell.com. Right. And the Jordan is like the Jordan River. It's Jordan. Jordan. Uh, D A N. Jordanmaxwell.com. J O R D A N. Maxwell.com. Right. I would also like uh, people if they would. Uh, the local people in our area to contact me if they want more information on these subjects or if they want to contact Jordan Maxwell through me. Uh, my name is Brian Hall. I am the producer of Conspiracy Con. Jordan, as I said earlier in the program, was featured prominently and he talked about these things. Uh, you can call me at area code 408-266-4749. My website is www conspiracycon.com that's all lowercase all one word conspiracycon.com and uh, I would uh, I would hope that all of you would use this wake up call to take a look at what's really going on right under our noses uh, Jordan just spoke at a UFO expo um, and I think it's important to see what's in our skies we should watch the skies, but I also think we should watch our backs and figure out what's going on under our noses in our own backyard. So please contact Jordan or me, either of us. It doesn't matter. Do your homework. Um, we would also um, encourage you to contact uh, the television studio here uh, for more information, technology trends, P.O. Box 487 in Mountain View here in Northern California, and the zip code is 94042 and I would encourage you to contact them as well. Um, Jordan, if, if there's one last thing you'd like to say in about a minute that we've got uh, to summarize things. I would say that uh, there's a world of difference that everyone needs to know between being a U.S. citizen and an American citizen. As an American, you're a sovereign. As a U.S. citizen, you are under international maritime mm -hmm. admiralty laws, mm -hmm. and you need to understand that we need to, to reestablish our freedom in this country and start showing respect for each other mm -hmm. and defend our country. Uh, and some of the biggest problems we have is misunderstandings. We need to do our homework. I would agree. Well, with that, we are going to say good night. I want to thank the audience watching Technology Trends for joining us. I hope this was informative for you. Good night.